What's going on, growers? It's James Pizzioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, me and Tucker are going to show you two tomatoes that we grafted together, and you won't believe what happened. Let's go! Let's start things out by checking out the two tomatoes that I grafted together. Down here, you can see where the graft is. The area is still swollen, even though it's healed over. I'm going to grab a harvest from both varieties of tomato, but before I do that, first let me show you how me and Tuck grafted both varieties of tomato together. Back on May 5th, I chose a young tomato plant as my rootstock. I picked the blue cream berry variety. Then I made a horizontal cut in the plant with a razor blade. Next, I took my razor blade and made a vertical cut in the stem so I could take another variety of tomato and insert that into the cut. This style of grafting is known as a cleft graft. Then I took my second tomato plant, I chose the red zebra variety and made a horizontal cut in that. After that, I shortened the stem just a little bit more and then shaved the sides of the bottom of the stem so they came to like a point or an arrow. This way I have more points of contact for the graft. Next, I inserted the top variety, the red zebra, into the rootstock plant, the blue cream berry, and used a grafting clip to hold them both together. I did the same thing with my two favorite varieties of tomato, the Super Sweet 100 and the Sun Gold Cherry, but I used a splice graft instead. Then I put some water in my tray and covered the tray with a tall plastic dome with ventilation slots on the top. To start off, I kept those ventilation slots closed to keep the humidity nice and high. Next, I moved the tray into a location in my house that stays really warm, about 70 to 80 degrees, and made sure that there wasn't any light at this point because the red zebra variety doesn't have any roots. So we wanna provide this with a dark, warm, humid environment so the plant could have some time to start attaching roots to the blue cream berry. After about four days or so, I started to slowly introduce the plant to a bit of weak light and started to open some of the slots on the top of the dome. Then. About a week after grafting, I took the plants and moved them into the greenhouse and left them in there until they were ready to be transplanted into the ground. Me and Tuck want to let you know that there's only about a week or so to grab the summer merch before it's gone for good. So if you want to grab a shirt or something, make sure you do while you still can at jamesbrigioni.com. Here we've got a tomato with two different varieties on it. I grafted one variety onto another. So we've got the red zebra and the blue cream berry. So this was a blue cream berry rootstock and I grafted the red zebra to it. You can see right where the clip is. I'll take it off here. So what I did was where I grafted it, I left this spot where we can, it was like by a crotch. So another, the original rootstock variety is still coming up. So we're going to have two different varieties of tomato on this one plant, the blue cream berry and then the red zebra. So let's get this actually into the ground. So we're going to plant it right into the wood chips. Just going to dig back the wood chips because we never plant into wood chips. The wood chips are just a mulch. We plant into the soil. So let's dig it into this. Look at that soil. Nice worms in here too. Nice size worms. Mixing some happy frog soil. We're gonna take our grafted tomato here. Again, we've got the grafted variety up top there. And then we've got the rootstock variety, which is the blue cream berry. So this should be pretty cool getting both varieties in one. The idea with this is if you only have the space to plant one tomato plant, but you want two varieties. So we think this is gonna be pretty cool. Mycosan, get this buried. Take some of our natural soil and just around the base. Tuck it in, and then we're gonna take some of our happy frog on top and water this in. There we go, all watered in. And then we didn't bury the graft. We've got the other variety, so now we've got the two varieties on one plant. So what will happen is this will catch up to the other one, I'm pretty sure. We're gonna allow that. We're gonna allow the blue cream berry to catch up to this one, and we'll be having two different varieties fruiting on the one single plant. We're gonna move some of our wood chips in, not much though, because we don't wanna restrict the blue cream berry one. That's good just like that. And then we'll get all our steak in. I'm gonna put a steak in. Nice bamboo steak. Then we're just gonna tie this top variety to the steak so that, uh, so that the wind doesn't do too much damage on it. Take that clip. Just gonna clip it. 
There we go. Then we're just gonna let it grow. The other variety will pop up and then we'll clip that one as it starts to grow as well. A few weeks after transplanting, the graft was healed over well and the plant took really nicely to its new home. As the season progressed and the plants grew, I treated them like every other tomato plant. I pruned out all the suckers and tied the plants to the bamboo stake. At this point, the plants were just growing beautifully. By the time July 1st had hit, the plant had blown up in size and was headed towards production. I just continued to prune and tie the tomato to the stake. The boss is always out here and needs some water. So we're just gonna give him a little bit of water right here. If you guys love seeing him in the videos, spam hearts down for the boss. And also remember to hit that subscribe button so you can see how this guy's doing every day. Man, it's hot out here, but he's always out here. It's August 6th now, and the plant is absolutely loaded with two different varieties of tomato on the same plant. Come down here, look at this. Two varieties, ripe and ready, same plant. I mean, look how amazing that is. Absolutely beautiful. When you track down, you can see, here is where I grafted the red zebra variety to the blue cream berry. You just track up, and that's where the red zebras are. Absolutely incredible. One thing that has blown me away is how well the red zebra variety has grown on this plant compared to a couple different locations where I planted the same variety. It seems like the blue cream berry variety has really good disease resistance, and since I use that as a rootstock, it greatly benefited the red zebra variety too. Commercial growers graft tomatoes onto hardy rootstocks so they can get the benefit of the disease resistance and the yield, so I'm pretty sure that's what happened with this. Since that blue cream berry was such a better variety, that rootstock actually helped the red zebra variety, and it picked up some of the good disease resistance of that blue cream berry variety. Me and Tuck wanted to graft these two tomatoes together for a few reasons. First off, we thought it would be a lot of fun, which it was. The other reason was because we thought it would be awesome to be able to grow two different varieties of tomato in one location. So if you only had the space to plant one tomato plant, you could still grow two different varieties in that one spot. Overall, me and Tuck had such a blast grafting these two varieties of tomato together. I mean, it was so exciting every day to come out here and see how well the tomatoes were growing one with another. And going into it, I was thinking, wouldn't it just make more sense for me to plant two varieties of tomato in the ground right next to each other and not have to worry about the grafting? But what I didn't factor in is how much benefit you can get from having a tomato with a, as a good rootstock to get all that disease resistance from it. So I didn't think about that. I didn't like think how it's so similar to like a uh, apple tree where we take our apples and we graft those onto super hardy rootstocks. I kind of got those same benefits you would get from an apple tree on this tomato plant. So it just opened my mind to a bunch of different ideas and things I want to do in the future. And again, I was just blown away. It's so much fun when you go into like an experiment or something and you think it's not going to go well or you're sure that it's kind of pointless to do. But then by the end of it, you just, you know, have this realization that, oh, wow, that actually is really beneficial. And I didn't even think about that. So it was just a really fun learning experience for me. So I think you guys should definitely try grafting some tomatoes together. The whole experience was awesome. I feel like a mad scientist putting this stuff together, making the Franken plants, but still they grow well, they produce great. And let's try one of these tomatoes. I'm sure they taste amazing. The blue cream berry, I mean, how insane is that? I can't get over the fact of two varieties of tomato on the one plant. It's just, it's so much fun. That's why we get out here. That's why we garden. Wow, so good. This blue cream berry variety, very sweet, zero tartness, oh, such a good plant and great disease resistance. I'm so happy that me and Tuck actually grafted these two together. Incredible. Like I mentioned earlier, I did the same thing with my two favorite varieties, the Super Sweet 100 and the Sun Gold Cherry, but for this one I used a splice graft. You can see down below, here's where I attached my Sun Gold Cherry to the Super Sweet 100. If you track up, you can see all those Sun Gold Cherry varieties, and right over here, you can see the Super Sweet 100 red tomatoes too which is awesome. Both varieties of my favorite tomatoes on the same plant. I made one mistake though as you track up here. You'll notice for the Super Sweet 100 variety, I accidentally cut the top of the plant when I wasn't paying attention when I was tying and pruning the plants. You can see though it shot up a new top and we still have two new tops of the Super Sweet 100s. So there's a little bit of an imbalance in regards to the two plants just because I accidentally pruned the one, but it's still incredible and so amazing. In the coming weeks and heading later into the season, we're gonna have both the Super Sweet 100 and the Sun Gold Cherries on the same plant. So think about that. You only got space for one plant, no problem. You can still plant your two favorite varieties of tomato. This guy's making making a ruckus in the background. What are you doing, boy? Looking for some cucumbers or something? Look at the size of the hole he, dealt, he dug back there. <laughs> they try to cool off. And look how dry the ground is. Just incredible. But we're having a blast out here and 
We hope you guys are too. This was one of our all time favorite videos that we've ever made so far. To be able to have two varieties of tomato, I mean, it's so fun. It's like, it's like a little science experiment. I feel like I'm a mad scientist or something, putting this stuff together. And to get production out of it too, so amazing and so rewarding. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Me and Tuck started this as just like a fun experiment to try to get the most out of one little location but I'm walking away with it with a lot more insight and a lot more ideas than I ever thought I would. That's why I guess we come out here and garden because there's always something to be learned. There's always some, to, some ideas to gather. And even when we make a mistake, there's still something that we can get out of it. There's no such thing as a mistake when we actually learn something from it and then can later use it as our benefit. So we may have not have made too many mistakes in regard to the grafting, but we still got so much more out of the experience than I ever thought we would. It's been such a blast. Before I let you guys go, I want to mention to grab some of the summer merch down at jamesprigioni.com. This is a limited time thing. The sales are gonna start running out soon. We're gonna close them for good and you're not gonna be able to get the summer merch ever again. So if you do want one, make sure you grab one while you can. I also wanted to mention one of our new channel members, a thank you to Sharona Gorin. Sharona, Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. We've been friends for a long time. I remember like I was checking back in 2017, we were talking back and forth on Facebook about gardening and like, it's hard to imagine that's five years ago. So we really appreciate your dedication. We really appreciate appreciate your support for the channel and thanks for being uh you know friends with us for a long time and just you know coming along for the whole experience your garden is awesome too it looks beautiful so check out her stuff she's got some beautiful pictures and stuff but we love that people that are a part of team grow are actually also growing themselves uh, nothing makes me and tuck smile more than that so we're going to cut this video off you'll notice you don't see tuck around here anywhere right now I'm telling you, it's just getting way too hot for the little guy. He went inside to go lay it out in the air conditioning to take his break, but spam the hearts in there for him because you know the guy, he's one of the reasons we're out here. He's, he's just the best. He's awesome. So Tuck and James will be back to you again real soon. We out.